and there was an accusation saying that a girl wanted to go running and you refused her to run and that if she ran another step without your permission, she was, in, you know, for all intents and purposes, in big trouble and that you would drive around her neighborhood trying to find if she was running. Here's the deal, man. This is, this is, this is what I'm talking about in terms of what led, what led to all this, okay? My relationship with the person that wanted to get me fired, um, never had a problem. You know what I mean? Obviously. Like, it, it, it's one of those things where it's, it, it's somebody that you uh, are always interacting with and, 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 and it's always uh, fun, funny, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And um, for four and a half years. The, the, things started in September... Um, we went to a meet, we came back. I felt as though physically she, she looked too thin. Okay. Um, we don't talk about weight in our program, which is some of the other allegations there. we don't talk about weight. There was never, did you ever tell girls that they were fat or talk no, about no, other? I've never told somebody that they're fat ever. Did you okay. ever tell a girl on your team that another, a girl on another team had a muffin top no, or it looked no. fat? Okay. I don't really use the term muffin top, okay? Like that, that's a term that the kids use uh, amongst themselves, okay? I will at times, we'll be at meets, okay? And, I, and I've, I've explained this to other people, and pe people know what I'm talking about. We'll be at meets, and there'll be somebody who has an atypical body type that's doing really well. Do you know what I'm saying? And I will point out that, like, it's amazing that that, that person is running that fast with that kind of with the, either being, you know, bigger or bigger built or whatever it is. Th this is for guys and women. I mean, there's, there's men out there. Paul McMullen, who is uh, one of the greatest milers in, in U.S. history, who looked like a football player. And it, it, so it's the same kind of thing. It's like, it's amazing that person can run that fast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I point it out because anybody, any of my trainers, any of the team doctors will tell you that I'm the first line of defense when it comes to um, eating disorders. And that I... Uh, I try to educate everybody on, on, on being, on making good decisions. Okay. And, and, and you got to realize like not every skinny girl, you know, needs to be saved. Not every skinny girl's got an, an eating disorder. You know what I'm saying? So in any event, um, with, uh, with the situation, what, what you'd asked me about with the, with the, the training in September, I thought that this person, um, looked too thin. Okay. And I was concerned. I told her she needed to go and weigh in with um, the trainer and so that the trainer can compare her weight to what she weighed in at the beginning of the year because we had at the beginning of the year she had weighed in with the doctors and the doctor myself and her sat down and had a conversation that this is probably as light as we want you to go because there were going to be some concerns about having your period and, and these kinds of things this is a conversation with the doctor me and her and if it goes lower then coach Hatzel needs to to intervene I, I, she kind of looked the same, and, but then in September, I could st start to see that she was getting too thin. She weighs in, she's too thin. So then I tell her, for the next two weeks, and you, you have to get your weight up or you're not, you can't do any workouts. Like you can run, and, and, and I'm going to alter your, your training until you get your weight back up to what the doctors wanted you to have your weight at. So I had to alter it. And that's tough, that's tough for a, a distance runner to do, you know, because they're so, they're so motivated, you know. And then, so that's in September. We get back in November, and I'm starting to see the same thing, okay? Um, I, the other girls, in the, because I send the training out once a week, okay? and it's one email to everybody for 15 years. Everybody knows what everybody's doing. Part of the reason I do that is so people will hold each other accountable. People, you know, it's not like everybody's spying on each other or something like this, but, you know, there's a tendency for people to overtrain in our sport. There's a tendency for people to do more than what's laid out on the thing, right. on, on the so, form. So in regards to that, give me the context to when you later you said to her, karma is fuck right now. You are literally not to run a step until I personally say it's okay. I'm yeah. fucking serious about this. Yeah. That, that was the fourth conversation that I had to have with her in three weeks. This is what, this is what, this is where it all started bottoming out. Those other conversations have been deleted off of these screenshots, okay? I had a conversation with her um, in the middle of November when it was obvious because I walked by the training room on a Wednesday and I saw her on the bike again. When everybody in our program knows Wednesday, you don't cross train on Wednesdays. Yet I see her in there and she's cross training. So that's, that's, the, that's um, the middle of November. And then 
We have the same conversation when I hear that she's out doing morning runs on days that we're not supposed to have morning runs. And were you out? Did you ever? No, 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 no. I was told these things. Yeah. I'm not getting to the point where she said that I was driving around. Okay. I had, I'd already had four conversations with her. Okay. And each conversation is getting worse and worse. Okay. Where I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that you are starting to lose control here. You're training too much. And, and, and she would admit to me, in, when we would have the discussion about it, that she's just worried about getting out of shape. She was supposed to be on some downtime. And, uh, and, and, and you know, she's just getting nervous. And she, she's like, I know that I'm being dumb about this. And I'm like, you've you got to get control of this. Because if you can't show me that you can hold back on the training, if you can't show me that you can follow the training exactly to the T, I'm going to start worrying that you're dabbling with what I call the dark side. And, and the dark side is girls that have kind of that have lost control, lost control of their ability to reason when it comes to the training, ability to reason when it comes to um, their eating, and these kinds of things. This happens, and and I've I've got to do everything I can to make sure that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so I'm so I'm telling her. I I fly back from, like I said, this is the fourth conversation, three weeks, each one getting worse. I flew back from Europe. I was there recruiting. I land. I have a multitude of texts from people because my phone didn't work. One of the texts was from her, okay? That text said, yesterday when I was out on my run, my knee popped, it swelled up, and I had to stop the run. That's the text before that text, which doesn't exist. It's been deleted off of there. I said, this, this is what, because literally the day before I left for Europe, I had had another argument with, with her about running when she wasn't supposed to, literally the day before I left. Okay, so then I land, I hear this, it's the same knee she had surgically repaired her freshman year, and I said, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is why I'm telling you, you are overtraining, you're going to get hurt, you're going to screw this up. And I said, I don't care what the doctors say, I don't care what the trainers say, in terms of like clearing you, and even if they say that you can run, I'm telling you, you're not to run, you're only to swim all week. Okay. Only swim all week. If you run, because this is the, this is the, mo the this is getting out of control. I said, if you run, even one step this week, I swear on my life, I'm going to kick you off this team. I said that in the text. I don't know if that's in there or not. But I said, on my life, I will kick you off this team. I don't care if you're an All-American. I'm not going to sit back and watch you systematically destroy your whole running career because you can't hold back and run, particularly now when when. Knees aren't supposed to pop and swell up, you know? I mean, it's not like you're running on your hands, you know? So I told her, even one step, I swear on my life, I'll kick you off this team. The very next day, okay, the very next day, we're at practice down at Secor Park. She's only supposed to be swimming. I texted her. I said, do not run, okay, because I know you want to run. Do not run. She texts me back, okay, with like a lot of A's, all sort of, you know, kind of like sarcastic. We get back. It's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I drop the team off. I leave to go back to my house because I went hunting that morning, and I, couldn't, and I, did, I, and, and I forgot to let the dogs out before I came into work. I dropped the team off. I literally pull out of campus. And, you know, when you pull out of campus onto Bancroft, and you take a right, and you go under the overpass there, you can see Ottawa Park Golf Course right there on your left. I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, not even one, I'm not even a block away from campus, and I'm going past the golf course, and I look up, and she's running right down the middle of the fairway. You know, not even running on the, on the thing that comes across there. I mean, she's literally running right down the middle of the fairway. And I was like, what? In a million years, what are the odds of that? I'm, I'm not even past campus yet. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm literally on Bancroft heading to my home. I turn around to 7-Eleven to make sure that it was her, and she's just standing there up on the fairway going like this. And she turned around and, and kept running. Literally, the day after I tell her that I will literally kick you off this team. You are making bad decisions. I'm concerned about her health. You know what I mean? I'm concerned about the fact that, you know, when, when she has these other texts that she's kind of carved down about, you know, uh, that, I'm, that I'm calling whatever it is that she says, I'm literally having conversations with her telling her, I don't think that you're ready you need, you, need, you need to grow up. 
you need to mature in your ability to hold back when you're supposed to hold back because when you get to the next level there's not going to be somebody there holding you as accountable as, as, as we are here. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't make those decisions here when you have somebody holding you accountable, how are you going to make those decisions when there's no one to hold you accountable? 